Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is the sequel to Doctor Strange, the first Doctor Strange movie which came out in 2016. This one came out this year in May. I think it came out May 4th or something like that. And another film set within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It is directed by the one and only Sam Raimi. If you don't know who Sam Raimi is, you should look up Evil Dead or you should look up the first Spider-Man trilogy that we ever had. Sam Raimi was responsible for giving us those. This movie stars Benedict Cumberbatch reprising his role as Stephen Strange. Uh, Rachel McAdams shows back up in this movie. Elizabeth Olsen, Benedict Wong, Sochi Gomez Dinas. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right and the only reason I think I'm pronouncing it right is because that's how Wikipedia had it so I'm just gonna go with what, what they said. I know what you're thinking this movie came out a few months ago uh, that came out in May we're in August right now why am I talking about it well it's because I went on a little like two and a half month hiatus where I didn't review anything and I'm trying to review a lot of the movies that I didn't have a chance to talk about over the summer so I know what you're thinking you're thinking oh okay well since it's months later and it's on Disney Plus you could just spoil the thing and it wouldn't be no problem. I kind of want to review these movies like they're in the the moment you know I want to stick to my guns I want to review them the way that I would have reviewed them over the summer if I had had a chance to talk about it. like a spoiler warning when I'm about to talk about that type of shit but for now uh, no spoilers Doctor Strange from the MCU has to help America Chavez America Chavez is this multi-dimensional traveling uh, girl she could travel the multiverse and she's being hunted by these mysterious monsters and whatever from other dimensions so Doctor Strange has to help this girl this brings them into conflict with the Scarlet Witch aka uh, Wanda Maximoff. Pretty sure if anybody saw the trailers or knew the lead up to this movie, they would know that Wanda is is basically the villain in this movie. But I, you know, you could look at that as a small spoiler if you want. So yeah, Doctor Strange, America Chavez, Scarlet Witch. She wants the girl for reasons that I will not disclose here. And uh, yeah, conflict, movie, and multiverse stuff. There's definitely some parts of it, whether it's visually, uh, certain decisions that are made within the story that you could tell Sam Raimi had his fingerprints all over. There's a little bit of a creepy factor. There's some jump scares. There's some scenes and some imagery that you're gonna be like, oh, okay, this is definitely Sam Raimi trying to get a little bit in his horror movie bag. If you're looking for a full out like Sam Raimi type of experience, I wouldn't say that. It does feel like an MCU movie more than it feels like a Sam Raimi movie. Visually, there's some really strong work here in terms of the cinematography. There is some stuff, like some of the CGI is just kind of like, eh, okay, that feels a little bit lazy, like they, it, it feels a little bit unfinished. Then there are other shots where it's kind of like, man, that is, that's powerful, and I like the way that looks, and that's, that's amazing. It's kind of hard to see anybody else playing Doctor Strange now that he's been Doctor Strange for so long. Most of his appearances, I think that he does a really good job, and he did a really good job in this movie, too. Sochi Gomez Dienes, who plays America Chavez, she was fine. I don't, didn't think she was great, but I didn't think she needed needed to be for a movie like this. Standout performance of the movie though is easily Elizabeth Olsen. Elizabeth Olsen has been put into this role as the villain and I honestly gotta say it's a really great concept seeing Wanda become a, a villain in a movie like this. There are times in this movie where Wanda is menacing and intimidating and badass and kind of scary and it's 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 really fun to see some of that stuff happen. There's not as much multiverse and there's not as much madness as you would think from the title. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward story at least. Strange and America Chavez have to get from point A to point B to point whatever because Scarlet Witch is after this girl. It's a pretty simple story set up if you're just looking at it from that standpoint. This movie opens up the possibility of the multiverse a little bit more, even though it doesn't focus on that as much, uh, the possibility is there. And I'm really excited about what that could hold for the future. I really wanted to love this movie and I see a lot of people love this movie and I'm like, I, I want to be there with you. I want to jump on board. Unfortunately, I did not love this movie. I didn't hate the movie or anything like that. I didn't dislike it. I enjoyed it. I had a fun time watching it. But even though I like the concept and the idea of Wanda being a villain, because I think it's a decent follow-up from WandaVision in terms of where they were going with her character at a certain point in that show, I don't think her turn as a villain in this movie is executed with the conviction that I think they should have had for a movie like this. I don't think they commit to it, and it kind of makes it a frustrating watch. There are moments in this movie where Wanda is ruthless and cold-blooded and does not give a fuck about anything other than her mission. And there's other moments in the movie where she's hesitant. And this is only really done for plot reasons. It feels like there are plot reasons behind both sides of her. The way that they didn't really commit to Wanda, they kind of had her go way over the line and then tried to reel her back. And they did that constantly throughout the movie. It irritated the hell out of me because it kind of trivialized some of the deaths that you see in the movie. Like all of a sudden, some of the deaths that you see that are committed in this movie don't feel as important. I would say the biggest issue though with this movie, the issue that I 
just can't abide is the script. This is one of the laziest, most contrived scripts that Marvel has had in a really long time. There's so many wild conveniences and shit that is thrown into this movie from a character and a plot perspective that just does not make a lot of sense. So many moments in this movie where I'm just sitting there like, what? How, what? No, that's, why did that happen? I don't know how many times in this movie I had to stop and be like, that doesn't make sense. Why did they do that? But then it's kind of like, when you look at the script and you look at how it's written, it's like, yeah, I can kind of see why. In this movie, shit happens because it needs to happen. But when it comes to how everything is written, like that's the thing that lets this movie down the most is the writing. All of it kind of crumbles at different points of this movie while you're watching it. Kind of feels like Benedict Cumberbatch's Doctor Strange does not have a real arc in this movie. Likewise, America Chavez is really just there as something to push the plot. She might as well be a MacGuffin with legs. Very few attempts to flesh or build her character out to make her feel more like a real person. They speak to the issue issues that I'm talking about here. So this is a spoiler warning. In the movie, Wanda comes to Kamertage and Strange and Wong have set up all of these sorcerers to defend Kamertage. And Scarlet Witch, she just annihilates Kamertage. Like she destroys the place. She wipes out and kills, like brutally murders pretty much all of these students, all of these other sorcerers. By the way, Strange and Wong did nothing to stop it. Like it's, it's not only a poor defense strategy, it was poorly executed, poorly thought out. Like it's one of those things where I'm watching the movie, I'm like, Okay, this could have been thought out a little bit better. Putting all of that aside, Wanda kills everybody, she gets inside, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Later on, she has Wong tied up while she's using uh, this dark hold thing to dream walk. Why was Wong alive? I, I'm not entirely sure why Wong was alive at this point, but the plot needed him to be alive, so. Wong was alive. There's this woman played by Sheila Atim. She, play, she plays a character named Sarah in this movie. She comes up behind Wong and she's like, oh my God, we have to destroy the dark hold and it can't be you. So she risks her life to stab the dark hold book and she destroys it and she wipes herself out. Wanda immediately goes to Wong and she's like, oh, okay, so tell me how I can find another dark hold or tell me how I can find the spells in the dark hold because I need to dream walk. And Wong is like, well, you'll have to kill me. She picks up five of the students and she just starts torturing them and Wong in like 0.00, .00 three seconds folds like a cheap tent like he folds like a wet deck of cards it's the most crazy insane shit i've ever seen i'm like wong you literally just watched hundreds of your students die and you didn't give a single fuck now all of a sudden because these students are being tortured you fold easy so why did sarah have to die she died in like the dumbest way possible and it was for no reason she died for no fucking reason her death was pointless and this by wong makes the other students deaths pointless and it's kind of like why would you why? Why did the movie decide to do this? I'm not even gonna discuss what happened to the Illuminati. I know that's a hotly discussed topic on the internet. It was nice to see them, I guess. It was cool to see, you know, Professor Xavier. Although I do wanna say, we keep killing Professor Xavier in these movies. Why do we keep killing him? He's died like three or four times now in all the movies dating back to his first appearance. Can we, can we leave Professor Xavier alone? I liked Multiverse of Madness. I think there's some great moments in here. But overall, I would say Multiverse of Madness is a movie I only barely enjoyed. I will put this one in the Daily Planet. Those are my thoughts on Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Tell me, what did you think about the movie? Give me your thoughts on the film in the comment section down below. Please like and subscribe to the Super Fan Show. And as always, if you like what you see, tell me how you feel and stay tuned to hearing more from the Man of Steel. Peace.